Now, at this point, I'm going to physically install the drives in the chassis. So let's move the cables out of the way and get the case ready for the drive installation. Now, to install the drives, you have to remove the front panel from this case. Now, on this one, you basically grab from the bottom and pull, and then pry the rest of the assembly out. It's merely, you know, press fit on these, uh, these attachment points. I'm going to set this off to the side. Now I'm ready to install the CD-ROM drive. In this case, I've got the uh, knockout already uh, made in the front of the case. You'll notice that there are two additional knockout plates for five and a quarter inch drives here. If you were installing more drives, you simply like hit these with a hammer or grab them with your hand and bend them and uh, pry these uh, off. Same for the uh, three and a half inch drives down here. Well, I'm only going to install one five and a quarter inch drive here. So I'm going to take the drive and slide it through the front of the chassis, uh, back until the screw holes line up, and I'm going to get my screws and install them. Okay, now the CD-ROM drive is installed. Next, I'm going to install the floppy drive. Got the drive right here. That merely slides to the front of the chassis right in this position. And line up the holes. And then install the screws, same as the CD-ROM drive. And now the floppy drive is installed. Next, I'm going to install the hard drive. Got the hard drive right here. Now, this will install from the inside as opposed to the way the other drives worked. I'm going to slide it along the bottom here until I can get the screw holes to line up. And now I'll install the screws. Now, one issue with the hard drives is you want to make sure that the screws you're using are not too long. If you use a screw that's too long and it runs into the side of the, the frame, past the frame, and hits the actual head disc assembly, you can, you can damage the drive. So make sure that the screws you're using are of the proper length. If you're unsure, you know, check the documentation that comes with the hard drive. It should tell you. Or you could do a trial fit with the screws. Okay, now the hard drive is installed, and at this point we can cable all of the drives. Now, I already talked about the two uh, ATA cables. We also have a floppy cable that goes with the uh, system here. Now, if you normally, if you look at these uh, floppy cables, you'll see there's a twist. Um, the connector that follows that twist is the one you plug into the drive. So we're going to plug this end into the motherboard and this end into the uh, drive itself. Now, for this, I'm going to turn the system on its side have a little bit better access this way. And you can see the uh, actual connectors on the motherboard for the two uh, ATA ports as well as the uh, floppy drive. The two ATA connectors are 40-pin, and the floppy drive is a smaller 34-pin uh, connector. So I'm going to install the two ATA cables first. Blue connectors go to the motherboard. Now, in looking at the board here, the primary ATA or IDE is the black one, and the white one is the secondary. So, I'm 
you want to observe the pin 1 orientation. That is the red stripe on the cable goes towards pin 1. And this being the primary, I'm going to plug this one into the uh, hard drive right here. Now, as far as on the drive go, uh, is concerned, pin 1 is almost always oriented towards the power connector on the drive. So now that cable is installed. Next, I'm going to cable the uh, CD-ROM drive. That's going to go in the secondary ATA. And then the master connector will go to the drive. Again, orienting pin 1 towards the power connector. Okay, and then finally the uh, floppy cable. The last connector here. And pin 1 oriented towards the power connector on the floppy drive. Okay. At that point, we have our drives uh, cabled. Now, in some cases, you might want to take these cables and kind of bundle them up or route them so that they don't interfere with any uh, airflow in the system. Um, if you're using the proper, you know, 18-inch cables, usually they're not going to be very long and you're not going to have a lot of extra cabling in the system to worry about. So at that point... Um, we can now install the power supply.